Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth Fun Thing Thursday video. I know, I know, it's only the second Thursday video, but it's the fifth in the fun series, so I'm just gonna go with that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the new intro, that was fun to make. I don't know about you, and according to the YouTube analytics, I'm almost certainly wrong about this, but I feel like the videos are getting better and better. I'm learning so much about how to shoot and edit video, how to be comfortable in front of a camera, and how to be a better storyteller and make cooler art. I really hope that you all are working on your skills too. As kids, you're just so much better learners than us grown-ups. I really hope you're taking advantage of this time as an opportunity to build your skills in any area that excites you. Make sure to keep trying new things, to not get frustrated when you're not great at something right from the start, and to always have fun when you're learning and growing. For example, you might have seen me strike out like 20 times in the last video when my old, old dad kept hitting it on the roof. Well, I kept working and practicing, and now I hit it on the roof every single time I swing. There's no video of that, unfortunately, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. It's true. It really is. So keep shooting for the stars, kids. So last week, we learned about some old games. This week, I wanna share some of my family's favorite new games. Some of them are brand new, some are just new compared to the classics, but all of them are great, and they really highlight how huge the game industry has gotten in recent years. There's really so much stuff out there, it could be a little overwhelming to find a new game that you'll love. And they're not cheap. New video games are super expensive, and even board games cost a lot. And plus, you shouldn't be playing that many video games anyway, even though I personally think video games are awesome. So don't play them too much, or you'll miss out on lots of other awesome stuff, like family. And that takes us to the heart of this video, great new games that you can play with your family while you're stuck with them, and they're stuck with you. Okay, so let's get to the games. The first new game that my family loves is called Go Nuts for Donuts. In this game, every player gets the same numbered cards, one through four or more, depending on how many people are playing. Then, a group of donut cards are laid out in a row. Each player places one of their cards face down on the table with the number of the donut that they really want from the five or so that were laid out in a row. Then everybody turns over their cards. If nobody else picked your donut, great, you get that donut. But if two people pick the same donut, then nobody gets it, and it goes in the discard pile. Each kind of donut has a different way to score points. Some donuts have special abilities that will help you get more donuts or get rid of bad donuts that you don't want. When all the fresh donuts are gone, everyone adds up their scores, and whoever has the most points wins. Now this game is really easy to learn, and it's super fun to play round after round. It gets really interesting when you start to learn everyone else's tendencies or how they like to play. For example, one time we brought this game to a camping trip with a bunch of other awesome Abernathy families, and there was this one player who always went for the plain donuts every single time. So if you wanted to mess with her, all you had to do was pick a plain donut too. But I can tell you from experience, don't mess with her. She knows who she is. Another great game that my family's really been digging these days is called On a Scale of One to T-Rex. This is a totally new kind of game. Everyone gets a card with a number on it from one to 10. Then three action cards are laid out in the middle of the table. Now these actions could be anything from waving your hands in the air to acting like a T-Rex. Then everyone acts out one of the three action cards at the volume of the number on their card. So one would be really soft, and 10 would be super loud and outrageous. You try to figure out if another player has the same volume as you, and if you do, you try to match cards. If you're right, you get a point. If you're wrong, you lose a point. But really, it's not about winning and losing. It's about going crazy. We've got a huge weather system coming in from Canada. It's gonna be so rainy, you won't even know it's going to be like you're swimming in rain. It's going to be nuts. Oh, I can't believe how much rain is going to happen. My kids have also been loving a game that's brand new to them. It's called vegetables. In vegetables, you get to eat some of the most delicious and nutritious foods on the planet. The vegetables are so colorful and they have this great crunchy texture. The best part is that the grown-ups have to do all the work cutting and preparing the vegetables, and all the kids have to do is move their jaw in an up and down motion called chewing, and then swallowing, which is putting the vegetables in their belly. It is so much fun. Ooh. 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 
video. I really recommend that you try vegetables today. There are a few word games that my family's been really into these days. One challenges you to think quickly, another tests your vocabulary of long words, and a third one helps you learn word association, which is kind of like how words are clues to other words. The quick thinking word game is a game called Brain Fart. It's great, but it's not for everybody. For example, my son hates it, but the rest of the family thinks it's great. It's pretty simple. There are a bunch of big cubes with categories printed on each side. You roll them all and see what the categories are. Then you push the timer, which is shaped like a brain, but it has a screen on it that will display one letter from the alphabet. Then everyone takes turns trying to come up with words that fit the categories on the cubes that start with the letter on the brain. If it's your turn and you can't come up with a word before the brain farts, and it will fart. <coughs> you lose a point. Whoever gets the least amount of brain fart points wins the game. My son really hates this game, even though he knows a lot of words. Too many if you ask me, because it can be nerve wracking trying to come up with words when you're under the pressure of a ticking clock. But if you can handle the pressure, it's a lot of fun. Here, watch this. Uh, Delta. Uh, dance monkey. Denver. Don't play. The next word game is called Wordplay for Kids, but really it can be a challenge for all ages. Basically, a spinner determines two letters, and a dice roll determines the category. Then everyone has to come up with the longest word they can think of in that category that contains those two letters. Whoever gets the longest word gets to move their piece along the game board, and whoever crosses the finish line wins. You might be amazed at what kind of words you can come up with when you play this game. And you can fudge the rules a bit for players who are still learning how to spell. The last word game is called Chameleon, and it is based on word association. There is one category card that everyone shares. Words from the category are arranged in rows and columns. Then everyone is dealt a single card that has a key on it, except there's one Chameleon card, which has no information on it at all. It's the Chameleon's job to not get caught. It's everyone else's job to give a clue about the special word. The chameleon has to give a fake clue because the chameleon doesn't know the right answer. At the end of the round, everyone points to who they think the chameleon is. If no one guesses the chameleon, he or she gets five points. Whoever guesses the chameleon correctly, they get one point. It's very fun and you'll quickly learn who the sneakiest member of your family is and which members of your family won't be fooled. Another great feature is the blank category card, which is a dry erase card that you can fill up with answers that your family would know, like all your favorite movies, or restaurants, or even yourselves. Another new game that my family is really starting to love these days is called cleaning. In cleaning, the challenge is to keep your room neat and to not leave stuff lying all around the house. You get to bring your dishes to the sink after meals, and you get to put your dirty clothes in something called a hamper. You get extra points for doing your laundry. and double extra points for cleaning up after a pet, even if your pet only weighs five pounds. It is so much fun. Watch my kids having so much fun playing cleaning. These next two strategy games aren't really new because each one's about 20 years old, but they both remind me of chess and checkers, which are each hundreds of years old. All these games are similar in that they're beautifully and simply designed, they're easy to learn but hard to master, and every time you play you'll see something new. The first is called Blockus. In Blockus, your goal is to get rid of all your pieces. You kind of have to fit them on your board like a puzzle but not exactly like a puzzle. Your pieces can only touch corner to corner. The idea is that you have to use your pieces to block your other opponent's ability to put down their pieces. Two people can play, or even up to four. It's a pretty simple game to play, but it's very tough to be good at because there's so many different ways that you can mess with your opponent. The second of my new favorite strategy games is called Santorini. 
In Santorini, each player gets two pieces that they move around the board, wherever they want. But when you move one of your pieces, you have to build right next to where your piece ended up. The idea is that you want to build up a tower that's three stories high and then get on top of it. You can only move up one story. You can move down as many stories as you want. And the real trick is avoiding your opponent putting a blue top on a tower, which blocks you from getting on top of it. It's really simple, but very fun. Those games are great, but they can definitely be tricky for younger kids. If a little kid is looking for a fun strategy game, I would recommend Hiss. In Hiss, it's simple. You turn over a card, and you'll see a part of a snake that has two colors on it. Then you have to match that snake piece to another snake piece with the same color. If you can get a full snake with a head and a tail, then you win all of those cards. Whoever has the most cards at the end is the winner. Hiss is great for the little ones, but if you're a bigger kid and you want a challenge, I would recommend Dragonwood. Dragonwood is awesome. You are an adventurer in the forest that has lots of scary creatures in it. And your job is to capture these scary creatures using one of three methods. Stomp, shriek, or strike. You can decide which method you use based on what cards you have in your hand. Then you roll a dice, and if it's a big enough number, you've captured that creature. The winner is the person who's strong enough to capture the dragons at the end. The last great new game for today has been around for a while, but has really only caught on recently, like in the last few months. It's called Homeschool. In homeschool, the objective is to not let your brains rot by watching TV and playing video games all day. Instead, you let some super duper hardworking and amazing people called teachers send you lessons over your computer. These lessons will help you learn reading, writing, math, science, music, art, gym, and so much more. Some families are lucky enough to have a grown up helping out with the kids who are playing homeschool. But most families have really busy grown-ups who don't have time to play homeschool. So, if you're in one of those kinds of families, try to play homeschool as much as you can by yourself. That's called being resourceful, and it gets you a lot of points now and well into the future. Of course, if you're stuck on something, it's always best to ask a grown-up for help. But parents, they're not always the best at homeschool. And even for teachers, it can be tough sometimes. So anything you can do to help them will really help you to win. And when kids win at homeschool, everyone wins at homeschool. So there you have it. All the best new games that my family loves. You have two assignments. The first is to play some games with your family, especially vegetables and cleaning. Your other assignment is to help me out. We've only got a month left of school. And while I hope to do videos every week and maybe even some in the summer, I'm kind of running out of ideas. I'd love to hear some of your suggestions for games or types of games that you want to see a video about. You can write your ideas when you turn in your assignment, either now or the next time you're playing homeschool. So until next week, have a fun Thursday, a fun Friday, and a fun every day you get to play with your family. See ya.